Documentation is very important and vital to our analysis, but it does require the other parts of our analysis to give us a firm understanding of what the true subluxation is. So now it's time for our visualization on the patient. I'm gonna show you on the spinal model first and then we'll go right into the patient right after, just so you know exactly where I'm looking and exactly what I'm searching for. So visualization, when we have a ilium subluxation, when the ilium rocks posterior inferior, you can see that the top of the joint opens up. That is where the swelling, edema, and tenderness will be on the patient when we're visualizing, okay? So if we're visualizing and we see a pool of edema right up top here, that's telling us that there's a very strong possibility of a PI ilium. Now, if it rocks the other way, it rocks anterior superior, you can see the there's a gap at the SI joint at the bottom of the joint. That is where you will see your edema when you're visually looking. If the ilium rocks external, the entire joint will look swollen and you will see the swelling right in there, okay? And lastly, if the ilium rocks internal, you will not see the swelling at all because the joint opens up in the anterior. So. If you're just going based on visualization, you never want to just adjust the joint that's swollen. Because if there is an internal ilium, this left side will be the swollen one. So now you're adjusting the compensation and not the subluxation. So if you see swelling at, a, at the whole end of the joint, that can be either the EX ilium or a rotated sacrum. That is causing the joint on the posterior side to open fully, okay? If you're looking at the sacrum, you might see edema right at one singular joint. That edema is telling you that that sacral tubercle could be the issue. Okay, so now let's look at a patient. So now if we're looking statically and visually at the patient, we are trying to see the dimples right here and right here. When we're visually looking at the dimples, there are a few things we're trying to consider. Is one dimple higher than the other dimple? that can kind of point us towards a PI or an AS ilium. If, the high, if there's one that's higher, we're thinking the pelvis rocked AS. The lower dimple, we're thinking it rocked PI. This is again, just one aspect and we never hang our hat on just one aspect. Now what we're gonna look at is the edema. As you can see, there is a lot of edema right here on this patient as opposed to this side. And also this whole dimple just looks very puffy and swollen. This is kind of helping us illustrate and understand what is going on at this ilium. As you can see, there is edema all over the sacrum and right around here too. That one spot can tell us that there is a sacral tubercle here. This can be an EX ilium side. It could just be a PI or an AS based on where the edema is there. Or this side could be the problem and the edema is on this side because of the IN here. These are all thoughts as we go through our patient and we're visually looking at the spine. Okay, so after we're done visualizing what's going on here, we're gonna have the patient stand up and march in place with their eyes closed, okay? So they're gonna march in place with their eyes closed. As they're marching, we're seeing, does one ilium and one foot flare out? Does these rock back and forth? So now she's gonna stop and we're gonna see on this right side, there is a foot flare to the right. And then this one is pretty straight, but this right side is foot flare to the right. Now, to help us decide what the ilium listing is, we're going to use a gluteal fold and contour visualization. So, we're gonna have our fingers like this and we're going to meet the glute where it reaches the hamstring. And we're gonna come up right there and right there. As you can see, my right finger is lower than my left finger. When my finger is lower, that is telling us that this ilium has rocked posterior inferior. Okay, now come over here. We're gonna see up top on a bird's eye view. This ilium is gonna look flatter as opposed to this ilium. Again, we're looking right at this small section right here. You can see right here it's flat and this side is peaked. The flatter side is telling us that the ilium is internal. The peak side, it's saying it's rocked external. This is all based on 
simple anatomical attachment sites and origins and insertions to tell us what this ilium is presenting with. So now we're gonna go into static and motion palpation, which are another two steps that are very vital to our system of analysis. So for static palpation, we're keeping in mind visually what we just said before. We're trying to see, is there tenderness at the top of the SI joint, the entire SI joint, or the bottom of the SI joint? This is where the inflammation edema is going to be. So if I'm just statically palpating, I'm going down with my two, three fingers like this. And I'm trying to feel, is there any tacky spots? Is there any pitting edema, which is like a bruise in the apple where I go and I just feed in and find one little soft spot? That'll be very indicative of inflammation and a subluxation. So I'm going to ask the patient, I'm gonna palpate for the SI joint. I'm gonna find where it is. I'm gonna be at the top, the middle, and bottom of the joint. What I do is I'm just gonna feed in slightly and say, is this tender to the patient? Because if there's tenderness and edema at the top of the SI joint, that's telling us that it's rocked posterior inferior based on the mechanism of the subluxation that I described before. If there's tenderness along the whole medial part of this SI joint and it's going all the way, that can tell us it's either an EX ilium or a rotated sacrum, just because of, again, the mechanism of the subluxation. Lastly, I'll say, is it tender at the bottom of the SI joint, trying to see if it is an AS ilium. Again, you cannot palpate nor visualize edema of an IN ilium. The most common complaint you hear with an IN ilium is groin pain just because of the ligaments that attach and when it rocks internal it just stretches and puts a lot of strain on the groin ligaments so that's how we're going to use our static palpation next we're going to go over motion palpation and i'm going to explain that on our board in a second i'm just going to show us what we're doing so again these three fingers top middle and bottom of the joint i'm going to bring the patient towards me ever so slightly that's all we need that's how much the si joint moves it's not a huge rock back and forth, okay? It's just very slightly right here. This is why we're so, we're trying so hard to stay light because we wanna feel every little bit of movement. Again, specificity makes you scientific, okay? So being at this joint, I'm going to rock the patient towards me two or three times and then away from me two or three times. What I'm also visually looking for at this time is, is this glute coming off this bench early compared to this side? So again, now I'm going to run to the other side and it's always comparative. We're never just palpating one joint. So now middle, top, middle, bottom of the joint, bring towards me a couple times and then away from me a couple times. This is all the motion we need. And as you can see, this glute is staying down when I go this way, but when I come this way, this glute comes up and doesn't stay on contact with this table. So again, this is something that there might be an issue going on at this right ilium. So now let's quickly talk about what we're feeling when we motion palpate that way. When I bring the patient towards me and I'm feeling this SI joint on the right side and I'm bringing the patient towards me on the right, like I just explained, I am feeling for two different things per segment of the ilium and the sacrum. So the two things I'm feeling for on the ilium is when I bring the patient towards me, is this ilium rocking in and up the articulation? If it's not rocking in, we're saying that it's stuck as an EX. If it's not rocking up, we're saying it's stuck as a PI. If you just think about it, if it's not going the opposite direction, it's stuck where we're saying. Now, another big thing to help us differentiate between the ilium and the sacrum is what is this sacrum doing? When we bring the patient towards us, we are also palpating. Is the sacrum rocking in and rocking down the articulation? If you have a rotated sacrum at this side, it will not rock in nor down. It'll just feel like a brick wall and it's stopping right there. That will be very, very helpful to tell us 
whether or not it's a sacrum or an ilium subluxation. Because now we're seeing is the, if the ilium's moving fine, but the sacrum is the one that's not rocking in and down, that's lighting up a red flag for that ilium, okay? Also, another thing for us to use to find the sacrum, ever so slightly, we are just going to be going at each individual segment, rocking just ever so slightly in back posterior. You will feel just slight movement and closing down on that sacrum. If that is not doing that at one segment, then again, that's telling us that there could be a segmental issue. Same idea here at the SI joint. If we're on our top, middle, and bottom of the joint, and, the, and we're rocking the patient towards us, and we feel S1 is rocking in, S3 is rocking in, but S2 is the one segment that's staying. That could tell us that S2 is possibly subluxated at that area. Now let's discuss when we're motion palpating the opposite way. So when we bend the patient away from us. When we bend the patient away from us, we expect the ilium to rock out and down the articulation, okay? That's what happens when we're bending away from us and we're feeling what the ilium's doing. As well, when we're doing that, we're feeling the sacrum rock out and up the articulation. Normally, when you have one side of the sacrum that feels stuck or posterior on this side, when you come to the other side, it's gonna be very, very mobile going that direction. What I like to do, because I can only at this point in my career, feel only a certain amount of things at a certain time, I'll take two lateral bends to one side, just feeling the ilium. Then I'll take another two lateral bends to just feel the sacrum, to really try and understand what's going on with that patient.